I'm going to start with a story about how design thinking was used to create an innovative school system in Peru. So I don't know if any of you in the audience might be from Peru. Do we have Latin American here? All right, excellent. Peru represents. Um, well, as of 2012, and I'm sure these people can attest to this, um, Peru is ranked number 65 of 65 countries on the PISA survey. So while their economy has been growing for the last 10 years, uh, their education system has been struggling to improve. And of course, as we all know, that actually ends up forming the limits of growth of the country uh, if the education system is not improving along with the rest of the system. There is also a rapidly growing uh, middle class in Peru, and they are craving better education for their kids. Of course, they want to increase the life opportunities for their children, and they recognize that the school system is a barrier to this. The current norms, just to give you a sense of what it's like in the government schools, the current norms are um, rote learning, where teachers are speaking in front of a class and kids are transcribing in a notebook uh, the things that they are saying. We see a lot of crumbling infrastructure, just kind of how long ago buildings were built. And then also because of the um, uh, current state of the education system, we also see a fairly uneducated teaching force. So um, one of our partners at IDEO, uh, Innova Schools, decided that it was, uh, they felt it was up to them to do something about this problem. And so they asked us to help them design a system that would be international quality, how do we get a great education for the emerging middle class, that it would be uh, scalable, how do we get to uh, a sizable number of schools so that we can impact the, um, most positively impact the country, but that it would be affordable. So uh, we had a target tuition to work with of um, approximately $100 to $150 US equivalent um, per month for tuition for these kids. So that's context um, for this question. Uh, design thinking, as I mentioned where this talk was going to be about, is a human-centered approach to innovation. And so we always start by understanding people and what their needs and their concerns and their interests are so that we can make sure that we're actually designing for what people aspire toward. So I'm going to give you a sense of just you know, the current aspirations of some folks in Peru. So we found that teachers in Peru um, absolutely want to be part of the change. They really care about their country. They really care about the development of it. And they are, as um, Brett mentioned earlier, uh, they are in it because they really care about kids and they want to help create this next generation. But they also aren't very prepared for the classroom, despite all of the hard work they've done in order to graduate with a teaching certificate. They're very eager to learn because they realize this gap, this difference. But they also really feel the need to have their creativity and autonomy and all the things actually many of us wish for in our work. So that's teachers. Parents uh, want a better future for their kids, but they actually don't know what it means to be educated toward that. Uh, so they've been raised in a particular way, they have learned in a particular way, they understand that that's not good enough for the future, but they don't know what great will look like. So they're used to seeing these notebooks filled, and that's the, uh, the warm, the heart gets warmed, and it makes them feel like their kids are learning when they see notebooks filled with text. They've also seen a lot of the fancy private schools that are popping up, and they recognize that these campuses and these beautiful buildings are a symbol of having made it, that if they aspire to be able to drop their kids off at a place like that. And they um, really understand that uh, English is something that really matters for the future of uh, business. And so this is um, an important value for them in education. And kids. Uh, kids everywhere in the world kind of ask for one thing. They really wish for their imagination to be engaged. They want to be active in their learning. They feel shut down by traditional methods of schooling. And they really don't want to sit passively and listen anymore. And, you know, interestingly, in Peru, I loved this. Um, kids also want English. They want to learn English. But it's for a very different reason than parents. If parents see English as the language of business, uh, kids see English as the language of YouTube. And so um, parents want their kids to learn English so they can be successful in the future. And kids really just want to know why that video was so funny. 
Um, but the great thing is they align. Everybody wants to learn English. So we get this input from people, the people that we're designing for. And all of these things may not be a surprise to you. You may be used to hearing these things in your environment. The question becomes, how do you use that in terms of what you design? So I'm going to just give you a sense of Inova's model. Um, at a high level, Inova's mission is to build a generation of leaders for their country. Um, so we determined that it was really important not just for them to, uh, not just for kids to develop the sort of basic academic skills, but also skills of autonomy and self-direction, all the kinds of things that would actually form a great foundation for them to become curious and creative leaders for the future. So their academic model is now designed to have two different modes. One of those modes is um, more of an independent learning mode where youth are self-directed. They're using, often using technology tools or working together with their peers in order to um, develop the sort of acquisition of basic skills. And then there's a mode of learning where it is much more constructivist, it's teacher facilitated, um, and it's more project based. And that's called uh, group learning, so they're working in groups. So the, are, the students are no longer constrained um, through rote methods, and they're definitely not sitting passively. You can see here one of these images. Uh, students are actually using a rooftop learning space uh, in order to go about their work, which is amazing to see kids just sort of autonomously go, taking on the quest to learn, which is not quite as common in other schools there. One of the ways that we're supporting teachers and how they're learning is by um, actually structuring what the lesson format is like. So how do we help teachers use innovative methodologies that they were never educated in? Uh, one of the ways that we're doing that is scaffolding the, the um, pedagogy for teachers by pre-authoring uh, about 19,000 lesson plans. Um, but this is not scripts for teachers to be reading and it's not even really necessarily curriculum. The idea is that there's a lesson arc that they're repeating again and again, so they actually build the muscles of doing project-based learning. And they're told that they can change 30% of it, keep 70% of it, change 30% of it. You can change whatever percent you want or whatever parts you want. But when you do make that change, submit it back into the system so other teachers can see what you've done and that we can also be looking for people who are very innovative around curriculum. And so this is the way that we're helping to to design the system to have teachers be learning too, not just the students. There is also an innovation program as part of the curriculum where students are solving social challenges in their community. And just to give you a sense of what Innova schools look like, um, I have to say parents do seem pretty proud to drop their kids off at school in these environments. So in the last three years, Innova Schools has grown to 29 schools, serving about 20,000 kids. They have about 1,100 teachers, and they're seeing some good results compared to the government schools. But of course, um, all of us have, I think, a long way to go in learning about how to evaluate those things. So this presentation isn't necessarily a case about Innova. What I wanted to share with you is that there is an approach that we can take that gets us to new solutions that is human-centered. So design thinking is a creative approach to problem solving that again generally begins with understanding people. And we then also understand the constraints of the market or the constraints of um, the, uh, what is feasibly possible in order to then design something at the kind of perfect intersection of all of these dimensions. I don't have enough time to go into design process. There are so many articles and books about that. But I would just say that there are some resources that we've created that we've adapted design process for educators. You can download many uh, toolkits and resources. Um, here's one example of that, design thinking for educators. But a lot of times we focus on the methods, the activities that you would do in order to go through the design, to design. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about also was the mindset, not just the process, not just the things you do, but the attitude that you do it with. So design thinking at its heart is empathic. We aim to really understand people in order to design for them. It's also experimental, and I know that's an uncomfortable word in, uh, in education, but the truth is we're experimenting all of the time. We're trying things out, we're learning from them. So how do you embrace the sort of attitude of prototyping, the attitude of actually being a learner yourself? It's also collaborative. We realize that in order to get to an innovation, you have to have multiple points of view and integrate that into a new solution. And my favorite, just the last one here, which I think is one of the most important in education, is that design thinking is actually optimistic. 
you have to believe a better future is possible if you're going to innovate. And that, I think, is something that we all have quite a bit of challenge with because we've seen so many things and we know how difficult it is to create new solutions. I kind of like to joke that design thinking is sort of like growth mindset for innovation. So for all of you educators out there, think of that metaphor. So you may be asking, OK, what can we use design thinking for in terms of innovation? I shared with you an example of design thinking as a process to uh, design a system. But it can also be used as a kind of cultural mindset, those mindsets that I just talked to you about, um, to allow people to create daily innovations. And because it's so project-based and um, real-world embedded, it's actually a great process for students to be learning. So quickly, I just want to share with you examples of those last two things. So the first is the Teachers Guild. The Teachers Guild is actually a community of teachers who are routinely designing solutions for their classrooms and uh, schools. Charlie here is a teacher that's part of the Teachers Guild. And uh, he is in, uh, teaching in a school in Maryland in the US. Charlie recently um, created an idea that was one of the favorite ideas and a challenge that was posted on the Teachers Guild. A school district in California caught wind of what he, uh, he had come up with and decided they really liked his idea. So Charlie from Maryland is now Skyping in with, to this meeting with um, the superintendent and with principals and with other teachers in that district in order to co-shape what implementation of his idea might look like in, in schools all the way across the country. So one of the things that we're seeing now is teachers being able to work across school boundaries. And we're hearing from them what a relief it is to realize that there are other teachers like them that are interested in creating innovations in their schools because for the most part, teachers are feeling quite alone uh, if they're looking to be uh, creating new solutions. And the last example here is how students are using design thinking in order to learn. This is, a, a, many of you might know about this, this is a, a contest created by Kiran Birsethi, who is a educator in Ahmedabad, India, and um, she created the Design for Change contest, which adapts a design process for uh, middle school students. Uh, the process is feel, imagine, do, and share. They go out into their communities and they feel the pains around them and they imagine solutions for them and then they do something about it. And kids are working on all kinds of challenges. One of my favorite uh, new examples is this group in the middle here who recognized that all of their forms and applications for school only had their father's names on them and they felt that it was unfair to women to not be represented in the official paperwork. So they worked with the leaders in their school and actually the government in their communities to have mothers recognized officially in all of their documents. Many, many amazing solutions coming out of kids around the world. So um, just wanted to give you a sense of what design thinking is and how it's being used to innovate in education. There are so many challenges that we're all facing every day and we all can use a human-centered, optimistic process in order to create new solutions for them. Thank you.